For years, Sydney had shimmered on my travel bucket list, a glittering mirage of iconic landmarks and vibrant culture. But this trip wasn't just about ticking destinations off a list. It was a chance to step outside my comfort zone and explore Sydney as Sarah, my true self. As an MTF crossdresser from the US, the thought of navigating a foreign country in full expression both excited and terrified me. But the allure of Sydney's openness and diversity proved irresistible. The pre-trip preparation was a whirlwind of excitement and meticulous planning. Choosing the outfits was the most thrilling part. Flowing maxi dresses, perfect for balmy Sydney evenings, shared space in my suitcase with trendy crop tops and jeans. I packed a vibrant kimono for a touch of Asian flair and a playful swimsuit for a day at the beach. Every outfit was a carefully curated piece of my Sydney persona, a Sarah ready to take on the world. But the clothes were just the first step. Makeup, a vital tool in my transformation, needed careful consideration. Sydney's climate demanded sweat-proof foundations and waterproof mascaras. Packing cubes kept my cosmetics organized, and a mini steamer ensured any travel wrinkles vanished before I stepped out the door. Essential accessories like statement earrings and a chic crossbody bag completed the picture. The biggest hurdle loomed at the airport. Security checks. Researching TSA guidelines for crossdressers eased my anxiety. Packing the outfits in separate checked bags and separating makeup into clear, quart-sized containers ensured a smooth passage. Stepping off the plane into the balmy Sydney air, a flutter of excitement danced in my stomach. The city buzzed with an energy that was both familiar and refreshingly different. Towering skyscrapers kissed the clouds, while the iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge stretched gracefully across the turquoise waters. The scent of eucalyptus and saltwater hung in the air, a unique olfactory welcome to this vibrant land. Navigating the airport and hailing a cab was a breeze. My basic Australian phrases, diligently practiced beforehand, came in handy. As we weaved through the city streets, I marveled at the architectural tapestry. Victorian terraces nestled against modern glass giants. Sydney was a city that embraced its history while reaching for the future, a sentiment that resonated deeply within me. The first stop on my Sydney sojourn was the world-famous Bondi Beach. Stepping onto the golden sand in my new swimsuit felt like a scene straight out of a movie. The powerful waves whispered promises of adventure, while the bronze bodies basking in the sun exuded an air of carefree confidence. I felt a surge of self-consciousness melt away, replaced by a newfound sense of belonging. As I waded into the cool water, I felt a wave of exhilaration wash over me. This was Sydney, and this was Sarah, finally living her truth. The Rocks, Sydney's historic district, offered a stark contrast to the beach's vibrancy. Cobblestone streets lined with charming sandstone buildings whispered tales of the city's colonial past. Here, I donned my flowing kimono, its vibrant colors a playful counterpoint to the weathered facades. Wandering through art galleries and quirky boutiques, I felt a sense of artistic freedom blossoming within me. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in fiery hues of orange and pink, I made my way towards Darling Harbour. This bustling waterfront precinct, with its dazzling array of restaurants, bars, and entertainment options, promised an unforgettable night. I slipped into a chic black cocktail dress, the city lights twinkling in its sequined bodice. A touch of red lipstick completed my look, and I felt a surge of confidence course through me. Darling Harbour was a sensory overload in the best way possible. Live music spilled out from open-air cafes, mingling with the laughter and chatter of crowds. The aroma of international cuisine wafted through the air, making my stomach rumble. I settled on a rooftop bar with breathtaking views of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, now illuminated in a mesmerizing display of colors. As I sipped on a refreshing Sydney cocktail, I struck up conversations with fellow patrons. To my delight, Sydney's residents were a welcoming bunch. They were curious about my background, but never intrusive. Some even complimented my outfit, which filled me with a warm sense of acceptance. The night unfolded like a dream. I danced under the starlit sky, the music pulsating through my veins. For the first time, I wasn't an observer on the sidelines, I was an active participant in the vibrant tapestry of Sydney's nightlife. As I hailed a cab back to my hotel, the city lights shimmering behind me, I knew this was just the beginning of my Sydney adventure. 
Throughout my Sydney sojourn, I encountered a surprising number of warm welcomes from locals. A fellow beachgoer complimented my swimsuit, sparking a conversation about the best snorkeling spots. At a vintage clothing store in the rocks, the owner, a flamboyant man with a penchant for feather boas, helped me find the perfect statement necklace, regaling me with tales of Sydney's vibrant LGBTQ scene in the process. These unexpected interactions chipped away at my initial anxieties, replacing them with a newfound sense of confidence. Sydney, it seemed, was a city that embraced individuality, and I was starting to feel right at home. Navigating social interactions, however, wasn't always smooth sailing. There were occasional curious glances or double takes, but these were swiftly overshadowed by the genuine smiles and friendly conversations. I learned to navigate these situations with grace, sometimes offering a simple explanation, other times simply holding my head high and owning my identity. With each interaction, my confidence grew. I wasn't just Sarah, the crossdresser, anymore. I was Sarah, the traveler, the adventurer, the woman who was finally comfortable in her own skin. There's no denying that stepping out as Sarah in Sydney garnered a certain amount of attention. But instead of feeling self-conscious, I began to see it as an opportunity to educate and inspire. A few curious teenagers at Bondi Beach peppered me with questions about my outfit and makeup, which I answered honestly and openly. Their genuine curiosity warmed my heart, and I saw it as a chance to break down stereotypes and promote inclusivity. Of course, there were a couple of instances where the attention was less than welcome. A group of rowdy pub patrons made some crude comments, but their negativity was easily dismissed. The vast majority of Sydney residents I encountered were respectful and even curious. This positive reinforcement helped me embrace the attention, turning it into a source of empowerment. I wasn't just dressing for myself. I was dressing for visibility, for acceptance, for a world where everyone could be their authentic selves. While Sydney's iconic landmarks hold undeniable charm, I craved a deeper dive into the city's soul. Venturing beyond the tourist trail, I discovered hidden gems that unveiled Sydney's unique character. Surrey Hills, a haven for hipsters and creatives, beckoned with its trendy cafes and independent boutiques. Here, I traded the beach vibes for a more eclectic look. A pair of vintage high-waisted jeans paired with a statement blouse. Sipping on a latte with oat milk art at a sun-drenched cafe, I reveled in the creative energy that buzzed around me. The walls were adorned with local artwork, and the air thrummed with conversations about upcoming exhibitions and indie music gigs. A treasure trove of quirky boutiques awaited me. I unearthed one-of-a-kind pieces, a hand-painted silk scarf in vibrant hues and a pair of statement earrings crafted from recycled materials. These finds were more than just souvenirs, they were tangible reminders of Sydney's vibrant artistic spirit and a testament to my own journey of self-expression. The Glebe Markets, a weekend institution, offered a kaleidoscope of sights and sounds. Stalls overflowing with vintage clothing, handcrafted jewelry, and eclectic art beckoned me in. Here, I unearthed a vintage sundress with a playful floral pattern, a perfect addition to my Sydney wardrobe. Haggling with the friendly stall owner, a woman with a shock of purple hair, was all part of the experience. The markets were a sensory feast, a vibrant melting pot of cultures and styles, where I felt a sense of belonging amongst the free spirits and treasure hunters. After the whirlwind of the markets, I sought refuge in the serenity of the Royal Botanic Gardens. Lush greenery and vibrant blooms offered a welcome respite from the urban buzz. Strolling along the meticulously manicured pathways, I marveled at the diversity of flora, a testament to Australia's unique ecosystem. Finding a secluded spot beneath a towering fig tree, I allowed myself a moment of reflection. Sydney, with its bustling energy and unexpected kindness, had pushed me outside my comfort zone and helped me embrace my true self. In the quietude of the gardens, I felt a profound sense of peace and gratitude for this transformative journey. Finally, we would like to express our gratitude for watching till the end. We hope you found the video valuable and informative. If so, please show your appreciation by hitting the like button and leaving us a comment below. We are eager to hear from you. In the end, we have a humble request for you. We are trying hard to keep you enlightened and empowered by creating awesome videos like this. Please support us by joining our membership program. The link is in the description.
Your little contribution will inspire us to make more awesome content for you like this. The next video will be published tomorrow, so don't miss it. Till then, take care. More wisdom, more solutions, better life.